The cross is a symbol synonymous with Jesus Christ himself, because as we know, Jesus was sentenced by the Romans to death by crucifixion. Science has finally unlocked a secret hidden for two millennia. By sequencing the DNA from relics tied to Jesus, researchers thought they would close a chapter of history. Instead, they found a genetic code that's not in any textbook. Buried in the data is a sequence so bizarre, so alien, it has sent shockwaves through the scientific community. You see, the DNA is human, but only partly. The rest is something else entirely, a biological signature that's frankly inhuman. Forget everything you thought you knew. This discovery redefines the boundaries of life itself. A 2,000-year-old mystery. Recently, a quiet, secretive project gave a handful of scientists permission to do what was once unthinkable, to take samples from these priceless relics and sequence the DNA within. This wasn't just a simple history project, it was an attempt to decode the genetic identity of the most famous person who ever lived. The challenges, to put it mildly, were monumental. You see, DNA is a fragile molecule. After just 500 years, about half of it is gone. After a couple of thousand years, what's left is shattered into tiny, almost unreadable fragments. And that's before you even consider contamination. For 2,000 years, these cloths have been touched, kissed, and wept on by countless pilgrims, popes, and kings. Every touch left behind a genetic fingerprint, creating a storm of DNA from thousands of different people across Europe, the Middle East, and beyond. It's like trying to find one specific grain of sand in the middle of a hurricane. The team used cutting-edge techniques, the kind of technology usually reserved for solving modern crimes or studying the bones of Neanderthals. They isolated the tiniest threads, soaked in what appeared to be real blood. They targeted specific areas where the original material was most likely to be preserved, away from the edges that had been handled the most. Their goal was to find a consistent genetic profile deep within the fibers, a single voice that could rise above the noise of centuries. They were looking for a male of Middle Eastern descent with genetic markers that would place him in the Levant 2,000 years ago. What they found started out exactly as they predicted, but then as the data kept pouring in, a pattern emerged that made them question everything they thought they knew about human genetics. The most shocking fact is that this wasn't just about identifying a man. It was about discovering a biological signature unlike anything ever recorded. The first results confirmed the blood type was a B, rare worldwide but more common in the Middle East. They found Y chromosome markers confirming the subject was male and mitochondrial DNA pointing to a maternal line from the region. It all fit, but then they saw it, a series of genetic markers that simply didn't belong, sequences that had no match in any global DNA database. It was human, yet at the same time, it was something more. Something else. The lab was on the verge of a discovery that could shake the foundations of both science and religion. Blueprint never seen before. Inside the clean rooms of the sequencing lab, supercomputers worked for days, piecing together the shattered puzzle of ancient DNA. The first layers of the genetic code were straightforward. They confirmed what many had long suspected, the man whose blood stained these cloths had roots in the Middle East. The specific haplogroups, the ancestral clans of our DNA, pointed directly to the area populated by Jewish communities two millennia ago. This was a huge win. It pushed back against the famous carbon dating test from 1988, which had controversially labeled the shroud a medieval fake. But what many overlooked in that initial excitement was the strange data coming from the Y chromosome, the part of our DNA passed down from father to son. You see, the Y chromosome is like a family tree for the male line. It carries a history of a man's ancestors stretching back thousands of generations. The scientists expected to find a common Middle Eastern lineage, one that would connect to known populations. Instead, they found a genetic island. The core of the Y chromosome was there, but it contained what are known as tandem repeats, long stuttering sections of genetic code that were arranged in a pattern never before seen by science. It wasn't just a new branch on the human family tree. It was as if a whole new tree was growing right next to ours. It was recognizably human in its structure, yet completely alien in its details. 
One scientist described it as finding a book written in English, but with a dozen new letters in the alphabet. This was the first inhuman result, but it wasn't the last. The team then turned to the mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, which tells the story of the maternal line. Here, too, they found something that defied explanation. The primary haplogroup was H, common in Europe, but with a subclade H33 found among the Druze people of the Levant, a perfect fit for the region. But mixed in with it were fragments of another maternal line, one so ancient and distinct it looked like it had branched off from the rest of humanity not thousands but hundreds of thousands of years ago. It was closer to the genetic offshoots of early hominids like the Denisovans than to modern humans. And you can see this pattern repeated across the genome. One part familiar, one part completely unknown. The thing nobody tells you is that our DNA contains junk sections, parts that don't code for anything specific, but act as historical markers. In these very sections, the scientists found sequences that were, to put it mildly, bizarre. They were incredibly complex and structured in a way that seemed almost mathematical. They weren't random like normal genetic mutations. They looked designed. This was the moment the project went from a historical investigation to something far more profound. The DNA in these relics wasn't just from a man from the Middle East. It was from an individual whose genetic makeup was fundamentally and inexplicably different from everyone else's. Could this be the proof of a divine origin, a biological sign of a being that was both human and not? The God Gene The revelation of a partially inhuman genome sent a quiet shockwave through the research team. The data was double-checked and triple-checked. Every result was the same. The DNA from the relics presented a biological paradox. It was homo sapien, but it was also something else. Now, the scientists had to face an impossible question. Where did this unknown genetic code come from? The possibilities were so wild they sounded like science fiction, yet they were born from cold, hard data. Three dominant and deeply controversial theories began to take shape. The first and most explosive theory was that they had found physical evidence of a divine being. This idea suggests the unique DNA wasn't the result of evolution, but of creation. The strange, structured sequences in the junk DNA, the Y chromosome that had no ancestor, could this be a literal divine fingerprint? A signature left by a creator? For believers, this would be the ultimate validation of faith, scientific proof that Jesus was, at a genetic level, the Son of God. The human part of his DNA allowed him to be part of our world, while the inhuman part was the physical manifestation of his divinity. It was a mind-bending idea, one that merged the spiritual with the biological. The second theory was just as staggering, but it came from a very different place. What if the inhuman DNA wasn't divine, but extraterrestrial? The thing nobody tells you is that many scientists have long wondered if life on Earth was seeded from elsewhere in the cosmos. In this scenario, the unique genetic markers weren't from a higher spiritual plane, but from a different planet. This theory posits that Jesus was a hybrid, a being combining human DNA with a genetic code from an advanced alien civilization. It sounds crazy, but it would explain the anomaly perfectly, a biological lineage that didn't evolve on Earth. Many people are crazy about ancient astronaut theories, and this discovery would be their holy grail. The third theory was more grounded in earthly science, but no less shocking. Perhaps Jesus wasn't divine or alien, but represented a lost branch of the human family tree. We know that modern humans once shared the planet with other human-like species, such as Neanderthals and Denisovans. We even carry some of their DNA in our own. What if there was another far more advanced hominid species that lived in secret, one that had a much more complex genetic code? What if Jesus was a member of this lost species and the relics held the last traces of their existence? This would rewrite human evolution, suggesting we weren't the pinnacle of creation, but just one of many human experiments. Each theory was more world-shattering than the last, and the evidence could be bent to fit any of them. A Reflection of Humanity so after all the speculation about divine codes, alien hybrids, and lost human species, where does the truth lie? The thing is, when something seems too fantastic to be true, it's often because we're missing a key detail. And in the case of the relic's DNA, that detail might be the most human thing of all.
Let's step back from the wild theories and look at what we know for sure. These relics have been on a nearly 2,000 year journey across the globe. They were moved from Jerusalem to Edessa to Constantinople and finally to Europe. And everywhere they went, people touched them. You see, the inhuman results, the mix of dozens of genetic lines from Europe, the Middle East, India, and Africa, aren't necessarily from one person. The most shocking fact might be that the DNA on the shroud isn't a single genetic blueprint, but a collective portrait of humanity's faith. Every person who handled the cloth, every pilgrim who knelt before it, left behind a microscopic part of themselves. What the sequencers picked up wasn't one inhuman code, but a chaotic tapestry of hundreds of perfectly human codes all mixed together over centuries. The ancient Denisovan-like DNA? It could have come from a medieval pilgrim whose distant ancestors had a higher percentage of that archaic DNA, which is still found in some populations today. And what about that bizarre Y chromosome, the one with no known ancestor? At first glance, it seems like a puzzle, a riddle that defies explanation. But the most down-to-earth possibility is far simpler than divine intervention or alien meddling. It could belong to a man whose paternal line simply died out. Not every family line continues indefinitely. Entire branches vanish from history, leaving no descendants and no record. It's entirely plausible that the man on the shroud belonged to one of these lost lineages a line that simply ended making his Y chromosome appear unique today. What looks like a genetic anomaly may in truth be the quiet echo of a vanished family tree. And then there's the so-called designed junk DNA, those intricate repeating sequences that have fascinated and bewildered scientists. On the surface, they might seem intentional, even mysterious. But after 2,000 years wrapped in a linen shroud, the fabric itself becomes a living ecosystem. Bacteria, fungi, and countless other microscopic organisms colonize it, each leaving traces of its own DNA. When sequencers analyze these relics, they aren't reading a pure genome. They're reading a layered story of contamination, preservation, and time. Patterns emerge, repeat, and mimic complexity, but they don't necessarily signal something supernatural. Even the most advanced sequencing software can be fooled by nature's microscopic fingerprints. So, did the scientists uncover an inhuman code embedded in the shroud? Not exactly. What they discovered is more human than many expected. They found a story. The story of a man from the Middle East. One who suffered, who endured brutality, whose existence left an imprint on the world. But they also found something broader. The story of the countless people who revered him whose devotion became a part of the relics themselves. Their DNA, tiny fragments from centuries of touch, sweat, and handling, intertwines with his, creating a tapestry of human connection. The shroud isn't merely a snapshot of one individual, it is a mirror reflecting two millennia of hope, faith, and love. In that sense, the mystery shifts. It's no longer about whether Jesus was human or otherworldly. It's about how the story of a single man could ripple across generations so profoundly that his legacy intertwined with the lives and even the DNA of countless others. It's a reminder that history is not just written in words or recorded in stone, but etched in living, breathing human presence. Science can decode sequences, trace lineages and map microbial colonies, yet even all of that combined only hints at what faith, memory, and devotion can accomplish. The real wonder isn't in anomalies or cryptic genes, it's in the human story that persists quietly yet unmistakably across time. So is the DNA on the shroud a divine code or is it the ultimate reflection of our own humanity? Let us know what you think below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.